We'll go ahead and get started with the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, it's a blessing to see this many out and their visitors and ones that have been here a while. It's uh, got a good number out today and thank each and every one of you personally for coming out today. Um, it's, um, glad you've made it and had Sunday school today. Gary done a good job in Sunday school. Thank you, Gary, for that. Um, how many birthdays? How many birthdays this week? She's not here. All right, we'll have to note that. We'll not let it. Sarah. That's right. So Sarah Patrick, just remember her. Maybe she's birthday. All right. Um, so Sarah had one. She's not here today, so be in prayer for her. On the announcements, on our business meeting we had, um, I do have that on january the 29th we will have a meal and a planning meeting right after church so in the business meeting the other night they decided uh, for the new year uh, activities and the planning for the year if everyone can next sunday being the 29th be your fifth sunday plan on staying after church for a meal and planning meeting that's right after, 12 o'clock. WMU for right after? All right. So we'll have Sunday school, church service, a meal, a planning meeting, and then WMU. It's the fifth Sunday. We'll, we'll, get, we'll eat lunch here. and Everybody stay at the wheel and can... We'll try to have a, a a day of gathering, being together, so it'll be a good day. So try to plan next Sunday, if you can, to spend a couple hours here at the church with us and try to get some of this stuff, uh, the meal and planning and the WMU. So I think it was at the reveal, secret power reveal for last year. All right. Anything else? Miss anything? Tonight services? I believe we better cancel tonight because they're, they're giving weather and it's just right to preach one thing. Hold off due to some temperatures may drop or we just don't know chance it for night services for tonight. We'll hold off on it so we'll be back Thursday night. Um, Brother Eddie's been sharing with us on Thursday night so come be part of that. Um, anyone else have any more announcements? Sorry, but if I had that in my mind, but I forgot it, so don't take me long to forget. Sorry. Glad you reminded me. Saturday, uh, the, the, the classrooms, um, teen class is going to Appalachian State for a basketball game. So anyone interested in going to that with Emily and Dylan and, and the church, uh, let them know today. Anyone else got anything? All right, moving on. 
Uh, I've had a bunch of prayer requests this morning, being prayer for everyone's prayers, uh, the ones that's not here, being prayer for them. Offering day, being the fourth Sunday, we got the regular offering today. If I can get four to come up, we'll take up the daily offering and move on into the Sunday school class or the preaching. You will come to your feet. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the great attendance we have out today for each and every one. It's took an effort to come out to be part of the church today, Lord. It's such a blessing to see each and every one. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Lord, we lift up each and every one's prayer request, the spoken, the unspoken, the one that's not here. Lord, we just thank you for you, your glory and your, your power and your love that you give us each and every day. Lord, be this offering that we lift it up to you, that uh, we do your will with it, Lord. Be with each and every one, and just give them all extra blessing for coming out and being part of it today, Lord. We just thank you for your presence here with us today. Be with Johnny as he brings out the message the next hour. Amen. Kids, the pennies. Turn, shake hands. Sorry, sky, but just 
us settle our troubles with Jesus. Let us settle all our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Then you will a prayer will turn in. Then you'll know the fire is burning. You will find we'll talk with Jesus makes it right.
Good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. Appreciate you being here. I know it's not maybe as some, uh, I was telling some of them a moment ago, some of them text in and said it was sleeping where they was at this morning. They'd not be coming. We miss them, but if it's slick, we, we understand that. And the reason we'll not be having, they're still forecasting ice for tonight, so we'll not be having our service tonight. Well, uh, we'll cancel it on count in case it does get bad. We don't want you out on the road, so uh, we will make that. We got two or three announcements to make, and then Brother David Blackburn is visiting with us. David gets to visit uh, each church one one time a year about it, isn't it, Dave? And 
Dave came to be with us today, and he's going to be sharing with you in a few moments. I appreciate Dave and the job he does with Director of Missions. Dave, uh, Dave's been, uh, he followed me for a while, and then he got ahead of me. How that day? <laughs> we'll give Dave a hard time. He, hey, I, when I left North Beaver, he went to North Beaver, and when I left Buffalo, we went up there, so he followed, but that's so good. Uh, Dave's done a good job with the, our association directing uh, ahead, and uh, I, I appreciate him very much and what he does and what we saw accomplished. So we're going to ask him to speak here in a minute. But first, I wanted to make the, the announcement. Uh, instead of Baptist Men's Day, most of you know today was supposed to be in Baptist Men's Day. We had decided to put it off till next Sunday. And Brother Dean Watson is going to be sharing with you, providing his health as so he can. I talked to Dean this morning a little bit, and he said Shirley was doing a little better they had burnt the nerve in her back, and then Cullen called and said Melissa's back was and hip was so bad that she was just in tears this morning. So you pray for Melissa. And also I want you to be praying for uh, Dennis, our son-in-law's dad, uh, Paul Braswell. He's going to have a uh, uh, heart surgery on the 21st of February. And these uh, told me the other day when I was talking to him that if he walked across the house, he got weak, and he couldn't figure out what was going on. They found out he's got a heart valve that's not uh, functioning right. And uh, so they're going to try to do that on the 21st, so you'll be praying for him. Uh, Lisa uh, said she didn't have all the information yet that they were mailing the papers. They're going to do it at Charlotte. So you'll be much in prayer for Paul. And then I think some of them that uh, had COVID last week, are still they still won't come on account they had it richard missy and some of them are are getting over it they're doing better but they uh so they don't want to come maybe bring something in so uh we can appreciate that so you pray for them that are sick and uh, take care that god can take care of it they are doing better as i can say they're doing better because and so you just pray for them now uh it's good to have our business good to have gary and his wife with us He's been telling he's coming. He finally made it. He told me, he said, I told you I was coming. He made it. Uh, it's good to have him in the house of God. It's good to have some of you. And uh, pray for Sean. I think he he saw her out on account of the weather. And so pray for them. Uh, the people that are out with salt trucks and working, trying to keep her road safe, whisper a prayer for them. They need it. They, they are doing to help us. So please uh, take care and pray that God takes care of them and watches after them. Now, I want you to be much in prayer for these things. Remember Thursday night, Brother Eddie's been teaching the book of John, and I, uh, I, I appreciate it very much. He's put, uh, put a lot of effort into getting it together. Come be here at 6 o'clock Thursday night. I'm sure you're going to enjoy what he's sharing with you, and it'll be good. I appreciate each one of you being here. I know some of you put forth a lot of effort this morning uh, to come, so I appreciate it. May God bless you as you do it. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer uh, just before Brother David comes to share with you out of word. I'm going to ask Brother Eddie if he will lead us as we pray, please, Eddie. Amen. Come on, Brother David and Sharon. Pray for Brother David Blackburn. Man, by the way, Linda's with him. We better miss it. <laughs> She's here. Well, appreciate Linda, too. They, they've come to share with us. So you appreciate you, Brother David. If you love the Lord today, say amen. Amen. That sounds like my Methodist friends. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. That's better. How many Bibles do we have? Now let's shake him at the devil. We're going to put him on the run. We're going to keep him away from us. That's how Jesus defeated Satan. That's how we defeat him too, is through the word of God. 
I appreciate this church, your friendship, your prayers, your financial support, the work that you do for the cause of Christ. Uh, not only do you give to the association, to I surely care, but you give to the Homeless Coalition, Vice County, of which I'm board chair, where we try to help the homeless in Ice County. And you do a lot. Uh, you work up at the campground. You've done a lot of work at the campground. We appreciate it very much. I appreciate your pastor and his wife, Gaynell. Uh, Johnny's serving over 50 years in the ministry for the cause of Christ. And Johnny's been a good friend over the years. It is true, I've followed him for a long time. But for 26 years, I've been director of missions. And I appreciate your prayers and your help in that area as well. But we're in the work together. Uh, you're one of 44 churches in Ice Baptist Association, one of 4,000 churches in North Carolina, one of 44,000 churches at Southern Baptist in the United States. We are the largest Protestant denomination in America. And I appreciate it. It doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. Jesus said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'll be in the midst. And so we appreciate you being here. Today, uh, Johnny's going to get a kick out of this. He heard this Tuesday at our prayer session. Uh, I wanted to share this in relation to the scripture that I'm getting ready to share with you this morning. I want you, uh, you've heard that saying, uh, don't let the cat out of the bag. I want you to let the cat out of the bag about the Lord Jesus Christ and for what he's done. I believe if I saw a lady walking down the sidewalk with a bag of cats, I would want to let those cats out. Now, I like cats, uh, but we give cats a hard time. You know, it's, it's raining cats and dogs. And, and, you know, if it's still raining about 2 o'clock, I'm probably going to take a cat nap. And, you know... Uh, it's amazing sometimes and, and Johnny's the same way uh, cat's got your tongue yeah, right. you don't know what to say mm -hmm. but uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat now who skins cats <laughs> it must be that lady that's got them in a bag you know that won't let them out I, I don't know but uh, we know what killed the cat and that's curiosity but today, I want us to let the cat out of the bag. If you will, turn with me to Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. I want to talk to you about how time moves on and what a difference a year makes. It is a, a privilege for me to get to visit our churches. It is true, I try to go about once a year unless there's something special going on or they call me to come in for something special. And I get to see how you've grown. And this church has grown over the years and just uh, done a great work for the cause of Christ and for the community. You are a good church. Your choir is excellent. I love your choir. Just a lot of good different personalities singing and uh, your piano player, I don't know who she is, but I'm going to shake her hand and see if it'll help me with my piano playing. Uh, but she did a good job. I appreciate the, the Sunday school teacher. Good job standing up here. And we all work, no matter what we do for the cause of Christ. We all have gifts. And every year we need to grow. What a difference a year makes. May we stand together in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. If you're not able to stand, please remain seated and that'll be fine. I'll begin reading Luke chapter 2 at verse 40. You may read along silently as I read out loud. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. But when they fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. And they, supposing him to have been in the company, 
went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolks and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have been sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wished you not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them, and they came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and with man. May God add his blessings to the reading of this word. I'd like to ask your pastor, if he would, to lead us in our prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the word. Pray that you bless it to our hearts and minds. God help us to covet your word, hide it in our hearts, Father, that we're not sinning in you, but Father, that we would always uplift you and give you honor. Father, I pray that you would help us to be about your business. Father, you you, you yourself, Father, was about the Father's business. God, I pray you'd help us to be, help us to share your word. Help us to be a light for you to preach it. Now, Father, I pray that you would lift David up, mighty behind the cross, give him the message that we need. And, Father, help us to have that opening and set your heart to your word. Have your way. Now, Father, we'll praise you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What a difference a year makes as an individual. We have the opportunity to grow. As a couple that's married, we have an opportunity to grow. As a church, we have an opportunity to grow. As a family, we have an opportunity to grow. This is 2023, and I'm glad we're through with 2022 and COVID and all that that's held us back. I'm looking forward to 2023. We still have to deal with COVID, but we know a little more about how to handle it and how to deal with it. And so I'm hoping and praying that 2023 will be a good year for all of us, but we need to grow in that year. It's a common experience to see a child that you've not seen for a while, and you will say, my, my, how you've grown. I think we've all said that. Will anybody be able to say that to you when they see you as a Christian? My, my, how you've grown in the Lord this past year. It's 2023. It's a good time to grow. No matter how young you are or know how many mature you are. I, I don't use that other word. If you're drawing Social Security, we're mature. So no matter how young you are or how mature you are, you have the opportunity to grow. We'll grow till Jesus comes. I'm 75 and I learn every day and I'm still growing and learning. One of the ladies asked me this morning about my height and I said I'm still growing, didn't I? And so we're all growing. Well, I want to talk to you about that for just a few minutes this morning. And uh, I think one of the things that I want us to look at is that we make a commitment to grow this coming year. And you make that commitment to yourself and to the Lord. And you say, I'm committed in 2023 to grow. No matter how young, no matter how mature, God's got a job for you. You know, Moses was 80 when God called him to go do the work. And he lived to be 125. So work till Jesus comes. We have that old song. That's what I said on the radio about Marvin Polier, my choir director. They always sang, we'll work till Jesus comes. And that's what we all need to do. Right. Not quit, keep working. Well, how do we grow if we're going to work? Well, we need to grow mentally. And that's an area that I have a problem with. Uh, verse 40 says, the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Mm -hmm. Growing mentally. We need to learn more in this coming year. I can learn all the time. 
And I'm amazed many of you have one of these. And I've learned a lot. And if I can't find the answer, I go to Google. And then if that doesn't work, I ask my wife. And then I learn about something that I don't know. And so mentally, it's important that we learn. We must never stop being learners. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10 shares with us the fact that we need to learn. But will we do it? That is the question. Will we do it? Or will we say, I already know it all? If you think you already know it all, your halo is probably just a little too tight. We do not know it all, and we have a job to do. We need to remember more. Psalms 119, 9 and 11. Wherewithal, or how shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. We need to have God's word. This holy, inerrant Bible verses in our heart and make application to it. Learning, learning. We need to remember more. At my age, my memory is not what it was one time. And, but I'm thankful I can still remember most of the days. I tell people I don't have Alzheimer's. I've got some timers. And sometimes I can't remember what I'm supposed to remember. But we need to grow. Remember more. Work on it. Become what Christ would have you to be. Jesus quoted scripture against Satan, and we need to quote scripture too. Know enough scripture to keep you out of trouble, and especially know scripture if you get in trouble, how to get out of it. Right. Scripture will help you. Have it memorized. Put it in your heart. You say, oh, I can't, I can't remember. I can't memorize. Anybody can memorize. We've all memorized some things. Well, why not remember the word of God and the scripture that is before us? I think as we remember and as we memorize, we need to understand what the Word of God is saying to us, to make application, to look beyond the surface. When Johnny preaches and he says something, try to figure out what is he actually saying here? What's he trying to get at? What is the Bible saying to me? Don't just read the lines, make the application. Dig a little deeper. Right. Grow yeah. mentally. Yeah. Learn, just like in disciple making. Learn how to disciple another person so they can disciple another person, disciple another person, and work sure. goes on. Yeah. We have a work to do. In this passage, I think it does a little good to learn and remember if we don't understand what we've learned. So understand it. Get a grasp on it. Talk to your pastor. Talk to your Sunday school director. Talk to your husband or your wife. Talk to someone who you feel like is very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And grow. Right. And learn and make application in your life and grow mentally. The Bible is very plain in several passages about this. Proverbs chapter 2 in verse 2, we find the words of the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, hide thy commandments with thee, yes. so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, if thou shalt keep her as silver and search for horror, as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Lots of scripture dealing with growing mentally. And I challenge you to do it. Psalms teaches us in 165.5, great peace have they which love thy law, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and nothing shall offend them. Mm -hmm. 
If anything bothers me as a director of missions, and I hear it a lot, they'll come in my office and they'll say these words. I have been offended. And maybe you've been offended. But what does the scripture say about it? What does it say when we look at the mental application? Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I had a lady to call me the other day and just pretty much chewed me out. And I came to the conclusion that she was a, a part-time Christian and I caught her on her day off. It would have been easy for me to have been offended. But I wasn't offended. I kept talking to her and we kept talking about things and before it was over, uh, her day of part-time Christian was over. She's back to being a Christian. And I know she's a Christian. And I know she loves the Lord. It's easy to get offended. But mentally, in 2023, there's no reason to be offended. Because you love the Lord. Secondly, I think if we're going to grow in 2023, if we're going to let the cat out of the bag for our life so it'll be a better life, we need to grow physically. In verse 42, there in Luke chapter 2, the Bible says, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. 12 years old was considered uh, a man, a mature man or a mature woman. And uh, when I was growing up, uh, my mother would take me down to the kitchen and on the wall like this wall over here she would take hits she'd draw a line on top of my head and you can see as I grew each year and I did grow uh, and we all grow physically. We all need to be healthy as we grow. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know you not that you are the temple of God? The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You see, when you became a Christian, whether it was on the mountaintop or in the car or in this altar, Wherever you accepted Christ, his Holy Spirit took residence in you. God lives within you. You are the temple for his Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. You need to keep your temple healthy. Amen. Yes. And to do things that will keep your temple to honor God and to please him. One of the things I think that we need is to get proper rest. And the Bible teaches us that on Sunday we're supposed to rest. Mm -hmm. And most of us do. And some folks have to work. Some folks are required to work. Uh, nurses and doctors and different people. But for the most of us, we need to get rest. Mm -hmm. Now, I have reached a point in my life where naps <coughs> are very important. If you don't know what a nap is, wait till you get to be 75. I go to work every day, get up about 5.30, and I work till 3 o'clock at the office or out in the field unless I have a meeting of some kind. I go home at 3 o'clock. I have a 120-pound white lab. I feed him, and me and him go up to the bedroom, and we take us a nap. And then I'm ready to go for the rest of the night, if I need to go somewhere at night. Rest is important. Mm -hmm. Don't work yourself to death. Mm -hmm. And some people do. And if you're a person that works, 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 read a little bit about what the Bible says about rest. Because physically, we need to be strong. We need to eat a proper diet. I've been trying to, to eat better. And I've reached that point in my life, instead of having a, a great ab section here, a six pack of cookies is more important to me. 
but I'm working on it. I try to drink water as much as I can. I try to eat fruits and vegetables. And, uh, but I need to, to do better. I need to, to do more. But if we're going to be who we need to be for God, we need to eat correctly, rest correctly. We need to get proper exercise. Do you exercise? How many steps do you take in a day? My phone has an app that tells me how many steps I make. And I think, boy, I'm not doing enough steps today. So I go take a nap. You know, I don't worry about it. But, you know, how many steps do you take in a day? And you take what you can take. You do what you can do. If you can do 100, that's great. If you can do 12,000, that's great. And so exercise is important as we serve the Lord, being physically fit as much as possible. I think about Johnny and all that he's been through in his lifetime. I know Johnny like a book. I remember when Johnny was in a car wreck, just about killed. He told me last week, he said, I went up there and sawed the tree up at the campground that fell and got rid of that tree and I found another one and I sawed on it until I got tired and, and, and I went home. Johnny's in great shape. And he didn't get that but just taking naps and eating cookies. He's worked on his body to keep it physically where it is. He had to work to be able to overcome his problems and his situation. And we all do. Every one of us do. And Johnny's a good example to overcome that. To be physically fit to serve the Lord. And in 2023, you can make a difference. In your own life. I don't want to challenge you to do it. I think, too, we need a, a, to be temperate in all things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25... Excuse me, I believe it's verse 32. Uh, no, I was right. 25. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. And here it is, but I keep my body and bring it under subjection lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. To bring your body under subjection, you can control your body. You are in control of it. I told the doctor when I went to see Dr. Hershner about six months ago, I said, Doctor, I'm, I'm gaining a little too much weight. And he said, well, you know what to do about that. He didn't tell me what to do. Of course, my doctor's overweight. But anyway, he's in good shape. Bring your body under subjection. You know what you need to do. If you've got a bad back, or you've got an arm that's weak, or you're mentally challenged as I am, if you don't eat properly in 2023, do the things that will make you a stronger person. And a stronger Christian because you house the Spirit of God. Well, we've got to move along here this morning. So uh, we need to grow mentally. We need to grow physically. We need to grow socially. Verse 46 and 47. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. How many friends do you have? Now, I have a lot of acquaintances. I've got 7,000 Baptists in the Ash Baptist Association, and they all know me. They are my acquaintances. But I have a lot of friends in the Ice Baptist Association and outside the association. I'm meeting with a Methodist group Tuesday night 
I meet with all the friends that I can meet with for the cause of Christ. Yes, I agree. How many friends do you have? And in 2023, I challenge you to make new friends. We need to be kinder to people. If you'll be kind to people, according to Ephesians chapter 4, you'll have friends. Be kind to people. When you're sitting at the red light and the light is green and the one in front of you is doing this, be kind. Don't do like me and blow the horn. That really gets me. They need to put those phones up when they're driving and drive. Friendship is never to be taken lightly. Abraham was called the friend of God. And Jesus called his disciples friends. Friends are important. Yes. In 2023, we can make new friends. Friends can be our enemies. What did Jesus say about that? Love your enemies. Those that despitefully use you. Boy, don't that burn you up. You find out somebody's been using you, talking behind your back. I try to become their friend. Boy, it just burns them up. I am not going to get upset at them. I'm going to try to make them my friend. I have a homeless friend. His name is Donald. You've probably seen him on the road. He carries a big backpack. He's Afro-American. And Donald was sitting at Astrid Cares, and I went over and I talked to him, and I said, Donald, how can we help you? And we helped him. And a little later, about two weeks later, I saw him. I said, Donald, I'm going to have to have a hernia surgery. I want you to pray for me. Well, you probably have to pray for yourself. I got over that. One day I saw him out at Ingalls, and Linda and I had just got an ice cream sundae, and I drove by and I said, Donald, would you like to have this ice cream sundae? I've not touched it. No, sir, it's getting ready to snow. I don't eat ice cream when it's going to snow. And so... It went on and on. I have become a friend with Donald. Donald is my friend. I want to help him. Even though he's homeless, he needs help. And they can be your friend. So we grow, no matter who they are. So we grow mentally, socially, physically, and lastly, we need to grow spiritually. Verses 50, 52. The Bible says, and they understood not the sayings which he spake unto them. And they went down with them and came to Nazareth, was subject to all these things. And mother kept them in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and with man. You and I have the privilege in 2023 to grow. And one of the things that we can do is to pray more. How much do you pray? Now you just think about that. How much do you pray? You can pray as you drive down the road with your eyes open. Chris Schofield, who's one of the greatest Bible speakers for the Baptist State Convention, you know Chris, said you don't have to close your eyes to pray, especially if you're driving. <laughs> so if your eyes are open, pray. We close our eyes, put our hand over our forehead to shut the world out. I understand that. We can pray when we have a meal, whether it be public or private. We can pray when we come to the altar. We can pray when we come to church. We can pray when we're sitting at the house. We can pray when there's an emergency. Linda broke her leg here a few years ago. And as I ran through the house to get the keys to the truck, I prayed as I ran. Pray more in 2023 and figure out a way that will work for you. Have a quiet time where you get together of a morning with God and look at Scripture. Let Him speak to you about it. Make application and pray more. Begin your day with that. Come to Wednesday night or Thursday night prayer meeting or any time the church has come together and pray when there's an opportunity. One of the things, too, I think that we can do to grow spiritually 
is to give more. Give more of our time, give more of our talents, give more of our money. The Bible teaches, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, that we are to give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity. We are to give and be happy about giving. I can't wait. I got ready. I, I don't care to tell you. I, I give part of our tithe to the church that we visit. I gave a tithe to this church this morning. I went to Linda and I said, how much is our Social Security increase? I've got to increase my tithe. I'm happy to do that. That's not my money. That's God's money. And I give it. And you can do it too. And if you're not a tither in 2023, I want to challenge you to become a tither. It'll change your life and it'll help your financial situation. And you'll grow in 2023. I think too, as we think about things that we can do, temptation is something that spiritually can hurt us. And we're all tempted. Every day. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all of sin comes short of the glory of God. So we're all tempted. But 1 Corinthians 10.13 says there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. He will provide a way that you might be able to bear it. You can overcome any temptation. I want to challenge you to do it. In 2023. Growth is outward, as you know, you see this profile, growth is outward, growth is also inward, yes. and it's the same way with Scripture, same way with God. We can look like a Christian, but if he's not on the inside, it's not any good. So there's an outward growth and there's an inward growth. And in 2023, I want you to let the cat out of the bag. And change your life. So at the end of the year, will God be able to say, My, my, how you grow. Yes. Like for every head to be bowed and every eye to close, piano player, she would, if she's still here, to come to the piano. And we want to have a time of invitation this morning. I still believe in invitations. And I'm going to ask your pastor if he'll come and stand in the altar. I'm going to pray for you that if you need to make a commitment in 2023 that you'll make it to God. You might want to come and kneel in this altar and make it. You might want to come and stand in this altar and make it. You might want to come on the front row and make it. But if you'll do one of those three things, that's a special commitment that you're going to make just between you and God. And if you need Johnny to pray with you, he'll pray with you. And if you don't need his help, you just pray and make that commitment to God and say, God, in 2023, I want to be a better person. And I want to be a better person in this area. And I want to grow in this area. And if you're not a Christian, today I want to challenge you to accept Christ. It's a great year. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you have any questions at all, Johnny will be glad to talk with you about salvation. <laughs> Heavenly Master, we thank you today and love you for your spirit and uh, being with us today. We feel like, Father, that we have worshiped and we've come together. And Father, now we pray for those who need to make commitments for 2023, Lord, that they'll let the cat out of the bag. They won't be ashamed to tell somebody, I'm trying to change in this year to get closer to the Lord than ever before. Have your way, and we'll praise you forever, for it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. May we stand together, if you'll play something. If God has spoken to you about making a commitment, this altar is open. We invite you to come. It's your time to make the commitment. The Holy Spirit saying something to you. Feel him in your heart. We invite you to come. Who will be next? It's those coming this morning. Who else would like to come? Make a commitment to God. Because you feel like this is something you want to do. Draw closer to the Lord.
someone else like to come this morning? Make a commitment in 2023. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that's made commitments this morning. And Father, perhaps those that are in the pews that make commitments. And pray that you would just lead them and guide them and help this to be a great year in 2023. That they will follow you mentally and physically and socially and financially and spiritually in every way to be closer to you than ever before. That we will let the cat out of the bag that Jesus has come to save and that we want to grow. We ask this in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Brother John. I appreciate Dave sharing with you. Brought you the word. It's challenging. And if you've enjoyed this morning, come. If, if you don't feel like Linda, just sit still. All right. I thought you were going to sit still. I love y'all. <laughs> Come sit down for a day. Tell if you've enjoyed the message. Take a moment. Be careful when you leave. Watch the deck out there and that you don't step on ice. We don't like falling. So you be careful. But you can come to fellowship and uh, appreciate you being here. Make sure our visitors know they're welcome and glad to have them. So we'll fellowship together. All right. Come on. Play if you will. Play if you all take.